this device here has just blown its fuse. And I'd been warned when I featured these in another video that other people had used them and they'd popped uh, after a while. So what this is, it's a desiccant dryer. It uses these cartridges that are filled with silica gel. You put them onto the top and it blows hot air through them. And once, uh, once they've dried out, you can then put them into enclosures and it will basically absorb the moisture in the enclosure. And I'd been, I bought a load of them because I was doing a load of tests on different desiccants. This one was filled with the cat litter and uh, it was quite interesting. But all these have been refilled with the silica gel beads. But anyway, let's cut to the chase. I'll put the cartridge down out the way and we'll open it up. It has blown the three amp fuse in here. Now, there are three possible things that could have gone wrong in here. It could be the power supply for the fan or... It could be the PTC self-regulating heater that is used to actually heat the air. Or, and this is a prime suspect, but I could be wrong, the PTC heater itself is a, a fairly prominent suspect, but the little red LED indicator, I thought at the time it was a very odd bit of circuitry and they were overdriving its resistor. So let's uh, open this up and see what we can find. So there is the little neon indicator. I wonder if the resistor's flashed over in that. Don't know if there's a diode as well. It does. I'm not sure if that's signs of heat or not. Let's take everything out. Let's see if we can find a sooty skid mark. I thought it was odd because the LED indicator was run directly from the mains. It wasn't run from the low voltage power supply that's used the fans. And that's strange because, you know, they could have done that. Well, let's unplug this. Let's see if we can actually get this board out and unplug it and then short the capacitor out on it, just in case, just in case of little zappy poos. So this is the mains voltage side. There is the capacitor. I'll just short that out. Nothing. That's fine. Finger test. Uh-huh. That avoids surprises. Let's take a look down at the... Uh, I don't know if I need to take the fan off that. I think I'm able to take this off completely. I do get deja vu of taking this apart in the video. So let's get these screws out. Actually, I think I do need to take the fan off. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe not. So here is the PTC assembly. Any signs of sooty skid marks around that? Well, aside from the fact I've just broken it. Oh, there it is. There's what's actually gone wrong. I don't know if you can see that. It has flashed over. It's created a little arc flash over here. Hold on, I'll get it right up close so you can see this. And right in. That is where it's failed. It has flashed over the heater. And there is me blaming that poor innocent LED. Uh, so there is a weakness in these. They, they have clearly got issues. And that's definitely sooty skid mark. I can see dark marks around it as well. I, oh, I wonder if it's gradually been tracking across the material. Oh, that's interesting. That is a bit of a weakness. So if you've got one of these, it's probably going to fail at some point. Oh, that's disappointing. At least I bought quite a few of them. Uh, they were very cheap. They were clearly getting rid of them. Oh, excuse me. I'll just zoom right back down there, shall I? <clears throat> so that's a shame. What a weakness in the design. What can I use in here instead of that? I'm not really sure because this was the optimal thing, wasn't it? I did think it was putting a lot of stress in that because it gets very, very hot. But the way it's failed, it's definitely tracking over the conductive surface. I wonder if they could have solved that by putting some sort of high temperature sealant in the side to actually prevent it doing that. Uh, well, that's the video over then. I've got a nice little power supply. I have a nice little fan, but I no longer have a heater, apparently. So, uh, yeah, that's the video over, I'm afraid. It is literally. But tell you what, then. No, tell you what. Let's take a look at the neon, in, uh, the LED indicator. Let's get that out. Let's uh, slit the insulation off, because I thought this was putting... I thought it really odd that they ran this direct from the mains instead of from the power supply. It just seemed a strange thing to do. So let's slit this open. Since it is defunct now. I'll get the cover off. Has it got a diode in the series? That would reduce the dissipation of the resistor. 
Uh, nothing under there. What about under here? Is it just that really odd, just a resistor in Sears and LED, which then shunts another half of the sine wave? Uh, no, nothing there. So the resistor is in line. Oh, there's the resistor. Maybe two resistors. Let's just keep uh, taking things apart now, because it's dead. It is toast. So there is a little joint. There is a sore connection. It is just a resistor. That's it. Let's see what sort of condition it's in. It will be terrible condition by the time I've run a knife across it. Well, I do have a few of these, but now I know to expect that they are going to fail. I don't. I was going to say, if you're using one, don't run it too long, because uh, it may require a cooling time. So the value of the resistor is, if it's still got intact colour bands, orange, black, yellow, 300k. Okay. I'm just thinking, is that 300k? That is 300k. I wonder if it still reads 300k. Let's get the meter into it, because that is a... Uh, it's not pushing it mega hard, but it's still not ideal circuitry. Let's bring the meter in. So I'll turn this to, to mega ohm. <coughs> mega ohms. And we'll probe in... We'll back probe with this connector. Oh, actually, no, I can just go straight onto there, can't I? Onto the metal housing there. And then I can go onto here and try and get a connection. Not getting a connection. It is, it did flash up 300k there. I'm not doing very well here, am I? Uh, it's still showing 300k. <clears throat> Okie dokie. But there we have it. So my apologies if you bought one of these based off that video. It was just a, an interesting novelty to take apart, but it does appear to have weaknesses. The thing is just literally sandwiched between these connections. Oh, there's a the little black sooty skid mark there as well. What a shame. But not to worry. It is what has happened. I suppose that technically speaking, given its construction, you could chop the corners off that and get a wee bit more life out of it. Uh, would that scrape off? Well, I think you could actually file or scrape it off, and that would potentially get a bit more life out of it, but it's probably not ideal. It means it's going to do it again, because it is showing signs of just gradually bridging across. But there we have it. Interesting. Well worth taking apart, but a, a bit of a disappointing product design. I wonder how many of those they made and sold. Surprising.